I would like to also thank Sunlight Foundation for the opportunity to present today. Uh, I am a newbie at Transparency Camp and probably a little bit of an outlier in the open gov and civic tech community, as it were, but it's nice to be joined by other community organizers uh, like Anthea. Uh, but I do have a good short, a story to share, so uh, here I am. So first, true story, is how I got my Twitter handle. Uh, Sunlight and Le Chicago and it seems Mapbox have at least one thing in common, which is gratitude for the Knight Foundation. Those of you familiar with the Knight News Challenge might appreciate this. Lisk had applied um, no less than five times to the News Challenge grant and was declined. Um, but I, I kept going. And uh, uh, on the Open Gov Challenge grant in 2013, we tried again. And one day in early June, I got a call from John Bracken. And he says, so you should save the state and you'll need to come out to MIT. Oh, but you can't say anything till it's announced. And I'm like, what's announced, John? And he says, your award for the challenge grant. And I laugh at him because I didn't believe him. And so I said something really funny at the time um, as a semi-Luddite, which was, if I really get the grant, John, I will start tweeting. And it will be my first tweet. So well, we got the grant. And it was my first tweet. And I've been a happy tweeter ever since. So the Knight Grant is a big reason why I have an, a good OpenGov story to share today. So um, I know Chicago's well represented here at T Camp. <laughs> Woo! Where are you? There you. Hi, Forrest. Um, Chicago has a great skyline and a great civic tech community. The city has made great strides in releasing government data and fostering a tech startup community and creating meetups for geeks to drink and hack together. Uh, some go as far as to try to rebrand Chicago from the city of big shoulders to the city of big data. But for me, Chicago remains a city of neighborhoods. LISC's business is neighborhoods. Uh, we are the local initiative support corporation, uh, but we're a national uh, community development nonprofit with a hyper-local focus. Our Chicago office has been supporting community development in the city for 35 years. This is Chicago too. This is a picture of one neighborhood Lisk has been working with for over a decade. Inglewood is on the south side of Chicago. And while it's less than 10 miles away from downtown, it can feel like it's a world away. So why is a community development organization like Lisk engaged in civic tech? Because OpenGov and questions about how to make government more responsive to citizens is fundamentally about power. Before OpenGov, there was community organizing and FOIA. And as any trained organizer will tell you, power has traditionally been defined as organized people plus organized money. But in the age of big data, that equation for me now includes organized information. And that then begs the question, how do communities that, and citizens with the least amount of power access information? And that leads you to the internet. This is a heat map of the city of Chicago. It happens to be a heat map of broadband use by community areas as of 2013. But it could be a heat map for other disparities with an economic and social outcome. The areas that are red and orange have less than 63% of res residents online. The red areas have anywhere from 24 to 54% of residents online. That means the majority of the folks are not on the internet, are not accessing information. These communities tend to be low income, predominantly African American and Latino. So now you might ask, so what? In time, everyone will get online, the digital divide is over, and black folks and Latino are using mobile now anyway, so what's the problem? I'll get back to that, in a, in, in that question in a second. But first, I want to talk a little bit about community development and translate that. Community development is about the deep relationship between people and place. Community development is fundamentally human-centered design. It centers on the idea that residents should have a powerful voice in the planning and physical development of their neighborhoods. They are the ones that are primarily using their neighborhoods, right? So List Chicago has pushed hard to innovate in the field of community development for over a decade with its new communities program. New Communities was, was our model to make community development more comprehensive. We helped 16 Chicago communities develop quality of life plans. This is the cover for the one for Inglewood, the community I referenced earlier. We worked with a community-based nonprofit, Teamwork Inglewood, a new group we supported to organize residents. Over 600 residents participated in the plan to develop a vision for the community. Then we invested in implementing the plan. It had a number of strategies related to urban ag, new retail development, safety, and health but it did not mention tech. 
Let's organize lots of money, including a major grant from the MacArthur Foundation to help us build the capacity of groups to engage, plan, act, and communicate as part of this demonstration. And many projects in the plan have come to life. I believe storytelling and journalistic communications are part of community development. In 2003, when we launched the program, we did a baseline assessment and half of our groups did not have a website, had little communication capacity, and therefore had little power to organize information about their community or the story of change. If you were to Google Inglewood, you are most likely to see stories about someone getting shot back then. Who would invest in a community based on that? I knew nothing of technology, but we met Paul Baker and Webitex and worked with them to develop a grassroots website platform that allowed us to quickly get community groups a robust, user-friendly website, and as it shared a platform, we could support a community of learning around this. This is Teamwork Inglewood's website. It's still vibrant today. And I didn't realize it then, but this was the first step for Les Chicago into the power of technology and organized information to advance community storytelling and development. The next step was pure opportunity. In 2008, Lisk was asked by the city of Chicago to lead a demonstration on how to close the digital divide. Remember that language? At the time, I thought we were getting ourselves into something crazy um, and in no way aligned with our community development mission. Neighborhoods were not demanding more internet. They were in the midst of a foreclosure crisis and the worsening financial crisis. But we did our old magic, asked groups who were interested, identified five new community lead agencies to organize the effort with their partners, raise resources to have them plan, not around technology, but how technology could improve their quality of life in their neighborhoods. The results was a smart communities master plan and the serendipity of the federal stimulus dollars to support broadband adoption. There's the little federal stimulus logo in the background, if you can see that. We got $7 million and managed to advance a comprehensive community-driven campaign to change mindsets and skill sets and increase internet use for productive purposes, and it worked. In fact, today in DC, the evaluation documenting the community-level change in broadband use is being announced at a separate conference. And again with Webitex, as part of the Smart Communities campaign, we increased the information flows with Web 2.0 neighborhood news portals like this one and trained community residents to become content contributors, and then the best part happened. And here I have to credit Damon Drummer, the tech organizer who we support at Teamwork Inglewood, who took that increased skill set from smart communities and built Inglewood Codes, a program to teach young kids to code. Liz helped it to be part of a citywide Kickstarter campaign and it exceeded its crowdfunding goal. And the community tech work grew deeper and, uh, and was being driven by the community. And other grassroots community development efforts began growing along with the tech work led by Damon and his other partners in Inglewood. So Inglewood still has challenges. Tech alone does not make them go away. But now, literally, when you do a Google News search, you will get as many good news stories about the work of local leaders as you will about, yes, the most recent, recent tragic shooting. And in my line of business, this is progress. And you take it when it comes. So when the city of Chicago announced a new program to sell city-owned lots for a dollar in Inglewood, the community and leaders and partners and residents had the capacity to act. They had power. Lisk had organized money from Knight and Boeing and could fuel Demand's idea to create a website, largelots.org, in partnership with the city's data. A civic tech company, DataMade, worked with Demand to create the site and local partners like groups called Rage, Imagine Inglewood If, and the Greater Inglewood CDC helped to do the resident outreach about the large lots opportunity. Uh, that's a picture of Demond, just for those of you who don't know him yet. Uh, within, the days, uh, within days, the site was up. The data on city-owned lots was publicly and in a user-friendly way available. Liz pushed it out to the news media, and more than 500 applications, still paper, mind you, uh, came into the city. They expected 100. They were overwhelmed by the applications and the phone calls. Inglewood leadership saw the issue, had access to organized money and information to help get the site built, Inglewood residents had the skills and could use the website because of the recent Smart Communities campaign. And even if they don't trust their government in general, they trusted their local organizations and leaders who encouraged them to apply. We are now working with the city to make the application go online as the program rolls out to another community. No more paper. And the city shared with me a couple other lessons from this, which most of you in the data community probably know. Um, but open data doesn't mean it's good data. They'll find out if the city really owns all the lots as they begin to go through the land transfer process. 
Second, they do think the site made the data more transparent and therefore the city owned land has a better chance of making it to community residents than, well, let's just say not go to community residents through a less transparent process. So what does this have to teach us about transparency? If transparency means by definition that something is easy to notice or understand or honest and open, then by definition, transparency requires people to do the noticing and to be honest. And people require organizations. And organizations need to work together to make data and technology matter and create community development opportunities. And this is the new work for community development. And OpenGov folks need to see community organizers and community developers as your partners. We know that when local resident leaders tuned into technology and the power of data are paying attention to city policy and in a network of partners with resources to build the tools to use the data, you can begin to see change. You can begin to see residents access information, connect with their government, own their part of their own, their community, maybe even begin to build upon those small victories and transactions into greater trust, engagement, and power. There is not an app for this. It's a process, a community development process. So community development takes time. The story of large lots began in a sense 10 years ago when we began the new communities demonstration and made a commitment to Inglewood. Civic tech doesn't happen over a weekend. Tech may be quick, but civic takes time. What excites me most though about the work LISC is doing now in the story of Inglewood codes and large lots is this relationship. I can see the beginnings of Community Development 2.0, where technology and open government are new ties that bind people and place, and that the fundamentals of community organizing can strengthen civic tech, because organizers get human-centered design and can be translators between the civic and tech worlds. The digital divide may be over, but the need for good community organizing and teaching everyone how to get online for economic and civic purposes has just begun. Thank you.